Yo, Wincolin family, we are back again with another video breakdown. This week, what we're going to take a look at is Jonathan Taylor and what we can possibly expect for the rest of the season. This is a guy I've got a couple of requests to do, and I understand why. I actually had Jonathan Taylor in fantasy as well. Um, I did trade him, but I didn't especially trade him because I didn't like what I was seeing or anything of that nature. I just traded him because uh, I actually traded him for Antonio Gibson. I, I, I just like Antonio Gibson's PPR upside, and I, and I figured I would take a chance on it, right? So at the end of the day, as I've been, you know, looking through the film, this is a guy I've been watching for the majority of the year. Um, I don't want to do too long of an intro, but I will say uh, just to get started that I don't think that this is somebody to panic about. He's doing good in fantasy. He's not doing great. Maybe, you know, we expected that we would see a lot more out of him. Maybe some people thought they see a lot more out of the Colts offense, especially the offensive line. Um, but they're going into their bye week. Typically in the NFL, you see um, a lot of changes for a team after the bye week. That's a good time to self-evaluate. And I think in their self-evaluation, one thing that maybe they'll try to do is uh, get Jonathan Taylor in space a little bit more. But one of the reasons that that can be tough and one of the reasons that we're maybe not seeing Jonathan Taylor just have um, a huge breakout season so far is number one, defenses I don't think are scared of the Colts passing game because Phillip Rivers is really not playing well, right? And I'm going to count them out right here, right? I'm a little, I, I expect to be a little bit better on my teleprompter skills. Uh, I have some, uh, I have some, uh, some new things going on, but, uh, <laughs> this is my first time doing numbers, but what I'm counting out right here is the eight Cleveland Browns that are in the box. This is week five, a game that the, the, the Colts lost, right? And you could technically say that this guy here represents number nine, even though he's outside of the tight end right here, right? But pretty much, let's just say that all these guys are here to play the run and you even have a wide receiver here in the slot and number 44 here who I've who I've covered up with the number two is also being covered up by the play button he hardly pays this guy any attention so what I see on film a lot is that a lot of defenses are just coming straight downhill right to try to stop the Colts running game because the Colts so far this this season have been a team that's trying to control the pace of the game they want to play defense okay they're running the ball and they're throwing a lot of short passes so at the end of the day defenses have seemed to counter that by just having eight to nine guys in the area of the line of scrimmage a lot of the time. So what happens when you're a rookie running back and you're going up against that so often, it's kind of hard to break out and bust big long runs. And as we watch right here, um, we're gonna get five yards, right? On a, on a very decent run. And this at the end of the day, is what I see from Jonathan Taylor in, in the Colts, right? I don't see a whole lot of reason for panic. I just see a team that's playing a certain way, um, a team that's trying to kind of chip away at you, uh, move methodically down the field. This is a team that holds the ball for long periods of time. So at the end of the day, this is kind of uh, what we're getting out of the Colts so far this year, and it's contributing to what we're seeing as far as not having those 20-point, 20 25-30-point weeks from a guy like Jonathan Taylor. Um, show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about, but we won't spend too much time on it uh, specifically. Uh, I can just say that I see it um, against pretty much every team uh, that, th that the Colts have been playing so far this year. So here we are week four, right? Against the Bears. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Safety, corner, right? Up against the line. You know what I mean? Safety in the middle of the field. I mean, this is an eight-man box with a ninth guy, a tenth guy to help, and eleven. Uh, and I mean, you pretty much have all eleven guys kind of focused right here in the middle of the field. When that's the case, you can't expect a whole lot of big runs. And in this particular situation, we're going to get a nice run that's going to be brought back by holding anyway. So uh, let's let's go right to the next play. This is a, this is consistent. Here we are, very next, uh, not next play of the game, but next Jonathan Taylor snap of the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Safety 
only about, what is that, about, I think that's about seven or eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Um, so you pretty much have eight guys in the box right here. I mean, this is what Jonathan Taylor is facing uh, a lot of the time, most of the time from, from the tape that I'm watching, right? And, you know, the movement of the tight end doesn't really change anything. The Colts want to establish that run. I mean, where do you really have to go in a situation like that? Pretty much, pretty much nowhere, okay? Right here, we're at the third snap of the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. I mean, when you're constantly seeing an extra man in the box, right? The Colts play a lot of two tight end sets, right? You have a tight end here, you have a tight end here, okay? When when that is the way that a team is playing, matter of fact, I, I almost missed the third tight end. So you have a three tight end set. The Colts play like this a lot. I mean, I think uh, in in the tape that I watch, there's almost always. Uh, at least two tight ends on the field at all at, at all times. So really, the way that the Colts play, I don't think it's conducive to us seeing a lot of huge games from Jonathan Taylor so far, right? Because all this does is give defenses incentive to stack the box. So as far as what that means for the running game is there's not a whole lot of places to run most of the time because also... Um, I'm not seeing the Colts' offensive line just completely blow guys off the ball like many of us may have expected, just knowing how good the interior of the offensive line is. And Jonathan Taylor in Wisconsin was consistently breaking long runs, running right up the middle of the field. But this isn't college. This is the NFL. And I say all this just to say, look, uh, you know, obviously this is the reason why I do this series. There's always typically something on tape that you can find as the reason why you're not seeing big time fantasy production because as i always say you know it's a real game being played you know and fantasy is a game of stats but the the real game has so many different components to it that you know sometimes it takes away from the stats that we believe we should be able to see but a lot of times it's you know it's just not that easy but i would put it like this um when i did have Jonathan Taylor on my team, I had a positive outlook for him. And the reason being is that from a talent perspective, he still has everything that you would be looking for in the top back. And what we're just waiting for is uh, just those situations to arise where this is able to translate into big time fantasy games. So what I want to show you guys is some of that ability, which I think was shown the best and the most um, in the game against Cincinnati, where because the Colts were down and down big to start that game, we saw a more opened up offense. Uh, we saw Phillip Rivers, I think, have his best game as a Colt, right? Because, you know, the lack of fear, I think, in teams that teams have of him passing downfield is, a, is another reason um, that the boxes are so full, okay, for Indianapolis. Um, uh, he has, what, uh, averaging 11 yards per catch, um, about eight yards per attempt. So the ball is not going really far down the field whatsoever. Um, so let's take a look at the Cincinnati tape because that gave us a little bit of contrast uh, based on everything else that you've seen from the Colts uh, this year. And I think if, if, if what we see in that game goes forward, then we'll see a Jonathan Taylor breakout. All right, so check this out. If you ask me um, qualities that make a NFL back successful, you don't have to have all of the craziest, you know, physical abilities. As far as the guys who go to the Hall of Fame, yeah, they're special, right? They they have a little bit of everything when it comes to physical ability. But the biggest thing at the end of the day, right, if you just want to be successful, if you want to be a starting NFL back, of course, you have to have vision. You have to have patience, right? Um, Jonathan Taylor has vision. He has patience, but then he also does have some of those really special tools as well. Ran a 4 4 um, in the combine. I'll be dead honest on tape. I don't know if he's always playing as fast, but then you have to realize that he is a rookie, right? So he does have explosiveness, right? The breakaway speed has not shown up this year, I don't think. I'm just being totally honest in, 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 in a lot of the tape that I've watched, but the explosiveness is there. One thing that's, that's there as well, he has power. He has elusiveness. So I'm going to show a little bit of this Bengals tape because there were more open field opportunities 
this is a game where Jonathan Taylor had a lot of big runs, um, multiple runs of over 15 yards, a couple of 20-yard uh, runs and catches, which I'm going to show you right here. And this is an example of the power that he has. So when I say this is a guy who has a grab bag of abilities, you know, power is one of them, and we're going to see that right here. We see a more uh, we see a more open concept getting out in the field. Number thirty, just get out of my way, bro. Get out of my way. And this is a guy that when he has been in the open field, I see things like this constantly. You know, just making the first guy miss, not allowing the first guy to be able to 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 make a tackle or bring him down, whether that's going through him, around him, over him. I think this is a guy that has that kind of abilities, and he does. You know. He averages almost three targets a game, you know, which 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 isn't bad. You know, you, you want it to be four or five. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the magic number is six. Uh, around six targets typically uh, will help a running back average about 50 to 60 catches a game. So at, at this particular uh, moment, a guy that's bringing in 94% of his targets, uh, averaging almost three targets a game. He gets out in the screen game. I'm not going to show you a lot of passing game stuff because it mostly is dump offs, though. It mostly is, is a dump off if it's not a screen. There was one play that I saw uh, that was an actual uh, passing play where he's running a route that was meant uh, to go to him. But other than that, you get the screens, you get the dump offs. Um, and this is a guy that can play with power. Now, let's look at some of his other abilities that he showed on film in this particular game. I think that it was just, this was just one of those games where kind of everything that comes with him was able to come out and show. And I think that we truly will see more of this after, after, the, uh, after the bye week. Now, what I'm about to show you isn't a big run by any means, but it's about, it's about how he makes this particular guy miss right from the break big jump cut and i'm out of there you know that's the thing about it right it's this is just a two yard run but the reason i'm showing it to you guys is like i said um not everybody has the physical ability this is a guy that has it S -s explosiveness power typically always falling forward that's what you want to see these are the reasons why you don't want to let yourself look at just the fantasy numbers just the stats and say i need to move on from this guy i say you want to hold him if he's your RB2, RB3, I say you want to hold him and wait for the bigger games to come because he shows the ability to do things. That means that if he keeps getting touches the way he is, if he keeps playing over 55% of the snaps or what is it, 59% of the snaps like he did, I believe, in this game um, against, the, uh, against the Bengals, can only go up, can't go down. Um, so let's, let's look at a little bit more just to get a, get a better idea of some of his ability as well. Now, here's a play here where we get to see one of the other elements I talked about, which is patience and vision. We're going to get the handoff, right? We're going to be able to vacate that spot where the guard pull, right? And that's a good play right there, right? Again, a lot of these aren't, you know, huge runs or anything that I'm showing you, but guys show ability. You can show a lot of ability on a, a, a run that's for no gain, always falling for it. That's another big thing uh, that I like about Jonathan Taylor. So, um, I say all this to say that this is not a guy I think to give up on. This is a guy to try to trust and just hope that the situation continues to get better, um, especially considering the fact that when you look up the hard numbers of it, Jordan Wilkins has not had a game uh, of more than nine carries. Neither has Naheem Hines in the last two games. Uh, neither guy has touched the ball a whole lot. I know Jordan Wilkins has been hurt, uh, so I think that plays into it as well. But uh, again, I think this is a guy where the arrow should be pointing up um, at the end of the day. So before I show you this last play, I want to show you, I do want to point out one thing that I haven't pointed out as I've been showing you uh, some of this stuff from the Bengals. I do want to point out that this is a more wide open game. As you can see um, in a lot of the stuff here that, that I saw in this game, you have in a lot of cases, three wide receivers on the field, uh, a more spread out look. And I think that also is, that's a big thing that contributed uh, to the fact that Jonathan Taylor was able to break off um, multiple 20 yard uh, runs and catches in this particular game. So again, that's the reason why I'm kind of looking at this game as an example of where we could go uh, with Jonathan Taylor, just if, if he's given that opportunity to play in space more often. Watch this carry here. This is the explosiveness, right? The, you know, if, if, if maybe he is able to get his hand on that defender, 
and stiff arm him away, maybe he maybe he gets a few more yards out of this as well. So, you know, this is this is about explosiveness. Just getting on your horse and getting out there. Like I said, I don't I don't know if I see him looking blazing fast sometimes when he has the opportunity to, but I do 